Welcome back, my name is Tanya Mendonca and this is About Kizomba. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to everyone. Uh, thank you for all the likes and shares and subscriptions. It's been overwhelming the amount of uh, love I've been receiving from everyone. It's been feel truly blessed. Um, uh, and all the suggestions as well regarding um, improving the sound. Thank you very much for that. I hope it's better today. So let's go back straight to the topic that we um, started last week. And I'd like to explain to you all a little bit of some of the reasons why us as as Angolans and as Palops feel so protective of Kizomba. Now, um, I don't want to go too much into the topic of what is Kizomba, what makes Kizomba, what is real, you know, what influenced Kizomba. I don't particularly agree with the theory that says all oh, Kizomba comes from Zouk. I believe that Kizomba has already existed, at least in Angola. Uh, we all had our own uh, types of music and we were already dancing um, everywhere in Africa. And I think Zouk influenced a, a generation of Kizomba. Uh, but because it was so trendy and it was so popular um, around all Africa, um, influenced the Kizomba that we still hear today. Influenced, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it came from it. But I, I want to leave that to another topic, to another day, that topic to another day. Uh, today I just want to explain some of the reasons why I, I want to go refer a little bit more to, into the culture. But for me to explain that I need to go back to, to a little bit of our history, our house story, and how uh, things, the dynamics of things were happening around that time. So straight after the independence, we went into a civil war. Things were very tough at the time and it was very frightening. Uh, so uh, there was a lot of families who left Angola and tried their living, whoever could, um, tried their living in, in in Portugal. So the first lot of immigration that we had uh, from Angola to Portugal was in 75 and I believe the Cape Verdeans, the Cape Verde did the same as well as Mozambique and Guinea-Bissau. Not much has changed and the war was still kicking and most of our parents I believe they thought that the war wouldn't last long. But five years down the line, the war is still going, so um, the immigration carry on. Parents were fighting for their children, um, so uh, you know, in the f their future, and they didn't know how things were going to to carry on. So a lot of them um, send their children to Portugal to you know for a, a, you know a hope of a better life. I was one of those children. Um, some of us went to live with family that was already there. Um, uh, some of us were, uh, you know, uh, going to uh, adopted families that, you know, that volunteered to help out. And some of them, you know, whoever had, you know, older siblings that could look after the younger ones also did that. So parents just sent their children. Uh, to Portugal and they stayed in, in Angola because they had to work uh, and send the money uh, for their children and and yeah that's how it happened. The situation the country was uh, was going through and the fact that we are now an um, uh, independent country um, new music starting to emerge and um, amongst uh, a lot of them, uh, Eduardo Paim, Paulo Flores, Ruka Van Dunen, um, and many others, starting to write lyrics um, about of the state of the countries, of you know, as well as the Cape Verdeans as well, starting to um, do the same. And one of the things that were um, those young um, singers were writing uh, that we have in common with. A, a, as well as with the Cape Verdeans, and I believe Guinea was doing the same, uh, was talking about Saudade. Saudade is um, it's the feeling of to miss something, but with a nostalgic feeling to it, attached to it. 
it 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 it's something that it goes beyond words. Um, and so that is a word that us as Angolans and as Palops know way too well. Of home, so that of our families, so that of our siblings, of um, of the food, of the heat, of the sun, of the beach, of of the backyard parties, of the the music and the lively um, lives that we used to have. So uh, there was a need of starting to uh, create to create um, social environments that we could um, share our culture and uh, starting to open clubs, starting to you know making home parties and uh, creating meetings of Angolans um, you know um, so we can now starting to you know so we could share and then in those house parties was um, you know we, we recreated what we what we do you know we cook our food you know and some will be in the kitchen cooking some will be in the table eating some will be you know talking some will be dancing children will be running around and and that's how things were done with the new communities of um of, of, of palops um angolans cape Verdeans, guinea santomes mozambique uh moving into portugal new singers starting to emerge as well you know they were starting to write lyrics around about what was happening uh, both in Angola and what we feeling and what was happening as well in Portugal to us as communities of Africans now making a new home in this new country that we didn't know and we couldn't really relate. Um, the adaptation for us were very it was very hard um, and we're starting to write about it. There was a lot of emotions put into these lyrics because, you know, there was a lot of drama going on in every life of every Afro-Portuguese. Uh, everything was very intense, you know, uh, the war, the civil war, uh, the war that we had with the Portuguese just before. Yeah, Huka van Dunen has a song uh, which became one of the anthems that marked that time, which he talks about the, uh, it's, it's called Manhã de Domingo, and he, he, he recreated a little bit what was happening around that, you know, he was talking about the children were coming down the, the avenue uh, towards the island, um, and the clothes were torn, and the hair was messy, and the feet were bare feet, but they they had a happy, look to it, you know, even though um, all that was happening, they still feel free and hopeful and um, and they were so hopeful and, you know, they didn't even feel that the soil was the, was burning their bare feet um, and, you know, and, and, and just marked that that's one of the songs that I, you know, I, I believe up to today everyone sings along, you know, no matter how old you are, you know, if you a son of Angola and you will know this song. You will sing along to this song no matter how old you are. O calcanhar escaldado e o calção cansado O suor de todos os dias I remember a particular day that um, we were home uh, having dinner and uh, a song by Elvio uh, called Mushima Wami. And the song goes Mushima Wami, estás sofrendo. Ai we Mushima Wami. Em Benguela, onde está o meu amor? A minha terra, a minha gente. Um, and the song goes on, it just says, you know, uh, Mushima Wami means my heart is in pain. 
uh, in Bengala where I left my people, my home, my land. Um, and, and it just goes on and it's a really nice symbol because it has a kick and again, you know, it, it, it's, um, it's very popular, everyone knows this song, is one of those. And I remember we were at the table and my daughter must have been six or seven at the time. And all we could hear is this little voice coming up and she had her hands into her heart and her face and she was singing with so much emotion that, you, you know, you would believe that's what she was going through and um, in a way it was because that, she obviously was imitating me because that song talks about Bengal, I come from Bengal. And she obviously was in, and to me it's important that she did that because I try to pass it on and that's how we do, we pass it on to our brothers, sisters, our children. Um, and, and and that's part of my story and that's part of her story too, you know, that's that's her story. And, and to me it was, you know, it was just overwhelming and I will never forget that moment. Um, and it just explains, it just, you know, it just explains to you how deep this can be, you know, uh, you know, even our sisters and, and, and children and brothers that are younger never went through what we went through. They still feel the same way, they still understand and they still have the same um, feeling towards the music because uh, we pass that on. As, as you know, Eduardo Paín is, is being someone that you also mark that era very, um, very much with his lyrics. Um, and so did uh, Paulo Flores. Uh, Paulo Flores has a song uh, where he, you know, has many songs to talk about Sadat and missing home and so on. But he also has, uh, there's one particular one that where he, he talks about the day-to-day -day of his mother's life. I mean, I don't know anyone who would you know, doesn't feel touched with that song. It's, it's, you know, it just recreates exactly everything that we all were going through. You know, everyone who was growing up in Portugal was feeling exactly that. You know, um, you know, uh, he, he goes, he goes through the day of his mom, how he used to be in Angola. <clears throat> how he used, she used to wake up at five o'clock in the morning and, and go do the laundry and then come back home and and then lay the table at breakfast and then wake up the children and. And she would make sure that they had nice clean clothes to play outside and, and she had time to speak to the neighbor and, and she had time to, um, to prepare lunch and then have an afternoon nap by the backyard porch and, uh, and then he goes on to now in Portugal where he, you know, she, she has to wake up at 8 and before she used to wake up at 5 and it was so hot and nice and warm and now it's cold and and he keeps looking at his mom and see her a distant look, you know, of memories of what she left at home and um, and it just keeps on on about it how you know he, he dries her tears all you know every day. Um, because all she thinks about is going back home. Esfregar um tanque velho Suas mãos já calejadas Relembram mágoas passadas Em manhãs de outros tempos The song, there's a, a, a part where he's on his interview to Dia Nike Zomba, um, Paulo Flores, talks about a moment where he was um, he was, in a, he was uh, about to to write the poem, to record a poem um, of a song called Certeza, and the song goes, Receio ter amor demais por essa terra, I fear I have too much love for this uh, land. O que What's going to happen, I don't know, maybe the war will restart. Um, ainda não me encontrei fora dela, sou estrangeiro. Um, I haven't found myself, but all I know it's outside her, I'm a foreigner. Um, se tiver que morrer, eu morro com ela. Como um homem vulgar, talvez possa lutar. Um, if I have to die, I will die with her. And if I have, if, you know, as an ordinary man, maybe I can fight. So he says, um, and I quote, So I was home, I have lunch with my family, and we turn on the TV, and the the opening news is the confrontations that started in Rwanda. 
So I just drop everything and I run to the studios. And we record this song with so much emotion that we can't even answer for ourselves. Kizomba was being made, and the new, this new generation of young musicians were being, you know, emerging. And the music was fresh, it was different, it was, um, it was very fun. And as you know, we were already dancing Kizomba to Zouk, so we just adapted our Kizomba, you know, and, and we were enjoying even more because now we had our flavor. It was our, you know, it was speaking our language, it was telling about our story, it was telling us, it was talking to our heart. So the pasadas that we were done, it was part of that culture that was now being created. So when we see Kizamba being sexualized and we in referred as, as a sensual dance, we're talking about Kizamba, not Tarashinya, not anything else. It's provocative, it's insulting, it's degrading. And we had these house parties where we will meet and cook and dinner and have fun and we just talk, you know, and joke because Angolans are very lively and they love to make jokes and tell stories and so on. And uh, and, 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 and these house parties, you know, it has no age limit, you know, you will have the oldries telling their stories when they're young to the youngest ones. And one particular thing that we have as Angolans uh, is that we are, we cannot talk the same language. I mean, even the older generation, they very much like embrace the Kalao that we use, the slang, you know, and uh, they they laugh about it and they talk with it. You know, there's always respect. We wish, we do respect a lot our elder, um, but but we they 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 do speak our language and they speak like us. So there is no that age barrier and you don't feel it as much. And as you know, we dance with family, you know, with brothers, uncles, cousins, you know, sisters. Uh, to us, that's, that's, and, uh, that's Kizomba, you know, when you're talking about Kizomba, that's, you know, that's how we do. Um, but yeah, you know, those times when the drink was, you know, later on and too much of drinking and you know, the sad stories will come up and you know, those musics were like talking about us and is touching in the heart and even the toughest of the men will break down and it was just dancing in tears were rolling out down our faces, you know. This is this is what we you know, we were going through in Portugal. That's how we, we you know how we coped. You know, that's that's how we, we did. We had to create our little world around there to be able to to share what we you know what we all going through in a way so we would just go on holiday to to angola learn the new steps you know that there was there was coming up you know from from, from the provincias from the province provinces in in luanda and in bengala and and then take them back to Portugal and, and show them there and that's how it was done. It's still it was still the same. There's no different and it's still that's how it happens today. The step still comes from the provinces in Rwanda. 
they go to the city and then travel around the world. Um, and that's what we try to do. Sometimes it feels that, you know, these tunes when they come up, you know, say even, uh, you know, uh, since Abeba Babeto Diaz, it became like an anthem of all that, all that time as well, you know, there is not, it's just not possible not to dance that song. That song comes up and you just want to go, go and get, you know, and, and it feels, and it has to be like a brother or, or someone that, that you know you're going to have, is going to dance those pasadas. And this is the thing, the pasadas were marked with the same, with the, with the music. So if you really want to dance with someone that dances that way that we were dancing, when that kind of song came up, so because it, it just makes it all complete, just makes the whole package feel, you know, seals it, you know, and it's, uh, and and that's why um, my point, my point is it's it's the pasadas, the, the steps that we call kizomba that we are so adamant to say that's what kizomba is. Those pasadas, that's what we want to, we want to save because that's what to us it is kizomba. It, it doesn't feel right to be dancing a song like that, you know the that we call like a, you know, a, a classic. And then you're just dancing to modern steps, you know. I don't want to be doing acceleration steps to music, to songs like that. Even, even the, the, the lyrics, you know, even with those old emotions that was going, that they were putting, and, and, and I was talking about the nostalgia and the sadness and saudade and all that, but it was also a lot of fun. There's, um, it, it was, it became a very popular and very trendy with the, you know, it, the, the youth at that time because of the language they were using. They're putting a lot of kalam, a lot of slang. Uh, think words like boda, kubiku, kumbu, you know. Uh, Tibar, you know, like, I, I know, Panhei uma tiba, fui dormir no meu cubico, acordei bem paiado, you know, that's the, you know, I went to, I went, I had, I got drunk last night and I, I went to sleep in my house and I wake up really hungover. I mean, it's really like, um, it, but it's all in slang, you, you know, you have to be part of that to understand what they're saying, it's, you know, and it was fun. Of course, it was fun. It was it was it was cool. It was different. It's trendy. It's, it's uh, it, it changed things. It's, and it's, even from that one, and still it still carry on like that. Especially the Angolans, they still talk with a lot of slang, dance and sing with a lot of slang, um, and dialect. Uh, Do you ever been to a festival or to a party where this full of Angolans or Palops, and then that one song comes up, uh, the DJ start playing the old songs and it could be. Uh, Zooks, or could be, you know, usually the songs marking that time, I don't know, like uh, Cheri by Zook, you know, and, and that's when they grab you by the hand and just take you already dancing to the dance floor and it's dance, 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 and then comes that chorus, it drops and they all turn to the DJ and they go, Desculpa, por favor, Cheri, só mais uma chance para te provar o meu amor. Uh, uh, you know, because we're feeling it and, you, and we have to seal that moment with the dance and it has to be that way. That's to us a good party. That's when you think, yeah, that was a good party. The DJ was good today. And of course I know this is not your path. I know this is not your journey. I know this is not part of your history. You can't relate to it. I can, I can fully understand that. And it's nothing to do with the fact that we don't want Kizomba to evolve or that it doesn't come out from the Angolan. It's nothing like that. It will be hypocrite of me if I was teaching and, you know, that, that contradicts what we do. Of course, we want Kizomba to be extremely famous and to touch the four corners of the globe, you know, and, um, and that's what we're trying to do. We just want it to be done in a in the right way and and to people to understand that this is what represents to us that's what they represent so that they know listen kizomba marks the best and the worst moments of our lives and if you were a teacher um no matter what um how high profile you are how much you travel around the world how many bookings you have or what kizomba you teach you know fusion, European, uh, modern, um, you know, your own style or 
you know, or or uh, traditional, regional, it doesn't matter what, what Kizomba it is. If you put the word Kizomba next to it, you're representing us. You're representing that era and you're representing the work of those artists that made the Kizomba that we have today. That's that. And this message needs to be passed on. It's your duty as a teacher to share this, to let them know what Kizomba actually means. It's not just about dancing or just about the, the music. It's what we represent to its people, to Kizomba for Kizomba's culture. Kizomba, it's not just the dancers. No. Kizomba is a culture. It marks the time and it, and it changed things. Well, thank you very much for uh, watching. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, um, hopefully this helped to answer some of the questions you might have regarding, you know, what, why do we feel so protective and we do, you know, so defensive sometimes about Kizomba. Um, I certainly hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please like, share, subscribe and I hope to see you again soon.